morning. morning. Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry if you have your Bibles this morning, I have a, a short reading, and it's from Matthew eight, uh, John eighteen, and I'm starting at verse thirty-six. And the reading says, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest I am. To this end I was born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I, sh that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth hears my voice. To this end I was born. Christmas. A day we remember the birth of our Lord. And Christmas Day is, is joy, joyful for many and sorrowful for others. It's a day with that we remember loved ones who have gone before us. And it's a day that we rejoice when we see our kids and grandkids opening up the presents that they received this morning. And every one of those are gifts, our kids, our families. It's not about the present in the box. The gift, is, is the gift that we have is from God, and that is our children, our families, our friends, our loved ones, one another. And sometimes when we lose loved ones, that... Christmas can be a sorrowful time and but always remember they are gifts loaned to us our very own life our very own breath that we have in our body is loaned to us and one day we have to give it back but the gift we come to hear about this morning is eternal. It's the greatest gift that we could ever have. For, this for into this world he came, and that was for you. He was born, not on Christmas Day, as everybody says, but when he was born, he was born, and he had you in sight he had you upon his mind and it was for you that he came for the bible tells us that he came to receive he came to save that which was lost he came to find you out of this lost and broken world for unto us today a king is born the king of kings and the lord of lords and the bible tells us that he will never leave us or forsake us that he is with us until the end of the age. The greatest gift mankind has ever received was Christ being born, the Savior. And we read in this story that it was a time when he was on trial and he said, to this end, I was born for. And that was going to hang on a cross for you and for me. Let us remember this gift. Let us mem remember the reason for the season. Christmas is not about gifts. What are wrapped in a box. 
Christmas is about family, friends, and Christ, the greatest gift of all. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, I just want to give thanks today. I thank you, Father, for sending your one and only begotten Son into this world that whomsoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for sending your Son as a sacrifice, as a saviour to the world. So, Lord, I pray that you would be with us this morning. Come. Come as we rejoice. Come and fill this place with your presence as we rejoice in the birth of our Lord and our Saviour here this morning. For we have come to worship you and you alone. As the three wise men, they came from across the other side of the country to, and they brought presents unto you. But them not realising, Lord, that you were the greatest gift that was ever born. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning. Come and have your way among us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And lead and guide us into all truth this morning that your name may be glorified in this place. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn. Joy to the world. Oh no. Joy to the world then. I need um I have two. No no, that's mine. Just that, I know it. Oh, sorry, um you. Oh yeah, don't worry. Joy to the world, five. Right. Got it. <laughs> sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sing joy to the world the savior reigns let men their songs imply well fields and birds rocks hills and plains repeat the sound in joy repeat the sound in joy is found for us for us the curse is found he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love That hymn is very significant, not simply because of Christ and the joy he brings to the world, but for our little church family, that was dear Peter's favourite. And um, it's wonderful that we sang that. I was just remembering his voice. 
Shall we pray? Loving and heavenly Father, we thank you for the words of our dear brother Jason, who has reminded us of the joy that we have in Christ Jesus as we remember the incarnation today. Lord, we thank you that as a church you have blessed us over recent years and our family is growing and growing and growing. And we pray for our brothers and sisters that are not here today because of commitments with their, with their families. Lord, we pray that they will glorify you as um, they serve them. Lord, give them opportunities this Christmas to share the gospel with loved ones so that they might follow them into Nodfa over the coming weeks and months. And Lord, I pray in particularly for the Sweetings, our dear Sweeting family, who have bookended this year with great loss. And um, again, we thank you for Peter, you have loved today. And um, I thank you for those who twisted my arm to have this service this morning. Forgive me, Lord. It shouldn't have needed twisting. Bless them. Lord, as we come to your word, may we submit to its truth and leave in the fullness of faith, in the awareness of your majesty and your spirit upon us. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I've got emotional again, haven't I? I can't hide it. Right. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Who here has opened their presents already? <laughs> did you all get what you wanted? Some of you did. <laughs> Do you know what present I love to receive the most and what present I love to give the most? Ellen knows. <laughs> Books. Yes, because a book is personal. You can write in a book, can't you? And you can date it at the time that you present it to the person you're giving it to. And every time that you look at that book on your shelf, you can remember the person who gifted it to you. And every time you read that book, you're reminded of the person who gave the book to you. Books are not just novelty items, are they? That you open on Christmas Day and that they break by Boxing Day. A book is not an item that you put in a cupboard never to see the light of day again. Books last, don't they? They're with you forever. They retain knowledge. So they always have value, even if left dormant on, on the shelf. They have a constant purpose. That's why books are the best gift. Amen? Amen. They are with you all year around. They're the gift that keeps on giving. They're the best types of gifts. With that in mind, Today, I'd like to bring us to the best book, the Bible, and take you back 27 centuries to the book of Isaiah. It's the words of the great prophet whom uh, 700 years before the first Christmas day, during the time of the Assyrian attack on the northern kingdom of Israel, the prophet was given these words. Shall we stand to hear God's word. It's from Isaiah 9, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. This is the Lord's word through the prophet Isaiah. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, 
Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. God bless the hearing and the reading of his word to us. Please be seated. So, these words prophesied the ultimate gift that keeps on giving. Amen? His name is? God's own Son. And he is called here in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, Wonderful. Say that with me. What's he called? Wonderful. Wonderful. In the Hebrew, it's Pela. Pela. The literal translation is simply wonder. Say that with me. Wonder. In Hebrew and in biblical traditions, your name is who you are. It is your character. It is your entire being. It is your identity. It's all of your achievements. And who Isaiah saw in this prophetic vision was this child born and he was beyond his understanding. He was beyond Isaiah's conceptions. So Isaiah was in, in utter awe of this baby and who he was, who he is and what he came to do. This child left Isaiah in utter wonder. So he called him Wonder. Wonderful. Say it with me again. Wonderful. Wonderful. Why is he wonderful? Why is he wonderful? Well, there was nothing about him for us to desire. Isaiah said himself in Isaiah 53 verse 2, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was simply a baby, one of millions of babies born in abject poverty. Yet, and this should blow all of your minds this morning, this baby was God. God in the flesh. The incarnation. God chose to enter into the time, space and matter that he created. And he chose to do so in the most humble of circumstances, through the womb of a Palestinian girl. He was born not in a palace or a castle, but in a stable. Philippians 2, being in very nature God, he did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, being made in human likeness. That's wonderful, isn't it? Say it with me. Wonderful. The baby that Isaiah prophesied, who took to Mary's breast, he created mountains. He built the seas. The baby that Mary caressed in her arms, he spoke every star into existence. Wonderful, yes? The newborn baby that Mary first looked in the eyes of as she caressed him knew Mary before the foundations of the world. That's wonderful, isn't it? Say it with me again. Wonderful. He lived a humble life. He never left his immediate area. He did not gain any degrees or any professional accreditation that we know of. He worked simply as a labourer, a carpenter, until he was about 30. 
Then he began an itinerant ministry, which lasted three years. He taught nothing but peace, nothing but love, nothing but forgiveness. He declared that the kingdom of God had come. Hallelujah. But just like today, people did not want such things on God's terms. They wanted peace, love and forgiveness, but on their terms. And that's impossible, isn't it? But just like today, they would not listen. So when confronted with the truth incarnate, the truth personified, they reacted against Jesus and crucified him. They rejected the God who gave them life. They rejected the God who sustained them, <coughs> who came to them in love to redeem them back to himself. Isaiah again, Isaiah 53, verse 3. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Jesus was born that first Christmas. He came here in the full knowledge that he would have to face the rejection of humankind. So that in his death on the cross, this, this pinnacle of human evil and hatred, this historic moment of deicide, God could use his perfect sacrifice of himself as a gateway of love for the humble and repentant to come and know him. Isn't that wonderful? Say it with me. Wonderful. Isaiah 53 again. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. By his wounds we are healed. Wonderful. And he wrote that 700 years before it happened. Wonderful. Three days Jesus then lay dead in the tomb. How many days? Three. The world rolled a stone over the truth. He was guarded by the biggest superpower of the day. They did not want God. So they killed him and locked him away. Just like the new atheists do today. But he rose again. Effortlessly. He rose again. And then he appeared publicly to hundreds and hundreds of people. He ate and drank with them. All eyewitnesses to this truth. And then he ascended to glory. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. The sun, the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And he's there now. And he is preparing a place for all those who believe. That's you and me, isn't it? He is preparing a place for us to go and live with him in eternal paradise, united with our loved ones, Peter, Megan, enthroned, where we will see Jesus face to face. There'll be no more sickness, no more death, no more tears. Not even the need for the sun, 
for his glory will light up the new earth. Amen. Wonderful. Say it with me. Wonderful. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, do you, like Isaiah, know the wonder for yourself? Do you know Jesus? Do you wake up every morning and is Jesus the first thing on your mind? Wonder personified. Have you received God's gift of his son this Christmas? Because he's the gift that keeps on giving, amen? The gift of joy, the gift of peace, the gift of forgiveness, merited to you by grace and grace alone. Jesus Christ. If not, today is the day. Come. Come and wonder at the incarnation. Come and wonder at his life, at his death and at his resurrection. Wonder that he did it all for you. Christmas Day. 2021, the day of your salvation. Come and meet with wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. We're going to rise and sing my favourite. Yes. Happy Christmas. Seven six.
Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen.